Hey guys, Andy here at MVP Java. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be covering how to integrate Spring via Spring Boot in a JavaFX application. So let's take a look at the GUI first so we can make heads and tails out of this. Uh, so we have a list of NASA missions on the console tab that you click on and you have an update on uh, you know what that mission's about. And you have another tab, the logger, which spits out logo, uh, logger information and stack traces. So each tab has its own controller and they are both children of uh, the parent, which is a tab pane. So the tab pane, you know, very simply is just including both these other um, files, these FXML files, okay? And by doing so, I'm creating different controllers for them to make it much more manageable or else you just get this crazy controller that does everything, okay? So if you wanna know how to do that and how to put it together, uh, then I'm gonna do another video on showing you how to do that, okay? But we're just gonna stick to how to integrate Spring Boot and JavaFX here. So if we take a look at where the magic happens, it happens in the Bootstrap class and any JavaFX application extends the application class in which in the main method we call the static launch method okay so nothing new there what's maybe new uh, is uh, this at spring boot application annotation uh, if you're not uh, privy to the details or if you're new to spring boot check out my introduction to spring boot i'll put a link on the video as an annotation okay check that one out come back to this one will make much more sense so in the init method, I'm actually loading Spring Boot here by the run method, and um, it's returning a um, configurable application context. So it's a little bit different than your traditional application context. It extends it. It just offers you lifecycle methods and gives you access to env environmental information. And if you take a look at the bottom here, I've actually overridden the stop method in order just to close the context properly, okay? So that's why it's a configurable application context. Uh, I'm specifying, as you always do in Spring Boot, the main configuration class. In this, in this case, it's called main, right? But like I explained in my other video, it's gonna pick up everything that you've annotated with at component and at configuration. But what's different here is that my, my controllers, if you take a look at them, right? Sure, they're JavaFX controllers, uh, and you can tell, right, because the add FXML is injecting the view aspects of the um, FXML um, hierarchy. So, for example, the text area and the list views and all that stuff. But I'm not using um, add FXML to inject any other controllers or anything like that. I really want to use a Spring for this. So by annotating my uh, controllers with add components, they're actually going to become Spring beans in the container and I'll be able to then inject anything I want from Spring in there. So you'll see here I'm using the AutoWired adaptation, which is you know dependency injection for um, Spring, and I'm using name dependency injection here. I'm also dependency injecting a service class. Let's take a look at that one. So this is where you know it's going to go get the information from a file and just spit it out. So I stopped at the service layer. I didn't go and use Spring Data or anything like that. That was too much for the example. So over here, at service is a, a stereotype of at component. It'll get picked up. I'm using at value, right? So I'm reading from the application.properties file to get a, some path information. All this stuff now is available to me because I'm going to be using Spring. Also, in the tab pane manager, also a Spring bean now, I'm using constructor. Uh, dependency injection. So I'm dependency injecting the other controllers. This is something you just can't do with Java FX. You can't dependency inject a controller into a setter or a constructor. You could only put it at the uh, property level, just like we saw in the um, console uh, tab controller here. Okay, so that severely hinders testability. So now we're going to be able to test our controllers, you know, like we want. Uh, and if you take a look at this class too, I've also showcased you know, that you can do setter um, dependency injection. Right? Nothing new for Spring, it's just that you know, when you're building a JavaFX application, this is, these are the kind of things that you just don't get out of the box. So that one line does everything that you're used to in Spring Boot, but in this case, I'm also making those um, JavaFX controllers also Spring Beans. Okay? On this line over here, I'm just specifying 
the main.fxml file, which will contain the whole hierarchy of fxml uh, components. And this line is very important. This is where we tell the fxml loader who's going to be in charge of uh, instantiating our controllers. All right. Now, obviously, by default, it's JavaFX, but in this case, we're saying no, it's going to be Spring. Okay. Now, I'm using a Java 8 method reference here instead of using uh, an anonymous class. Uh, it's just much more concise. Okay. Because, you know, if not, then you're going to see a whole bunch of code with the um, callback interface and the call method and all this kind of stuff. So, much nicer to see it just like that. And then so once we load our, um, our file via the FXML loader, we'll get back the root node from that whole hierarchy. We save it up here and we use it in a start method to show, you know, the application that I showed you. Okay. So the magic is really happening in the init method. And once that is there, sky's the limit. You can now use anything in the Spring Technology stack, especially now that it's been facilitated via Spring Boot. You're going to be able to use Spring Security, Transactions, Spring Data, on and on and on and on. As you know, Spring has a very rich uh, technology stack. Now, like I said, because we're using Spring Boot, uh, we also get Spring Test for free. Okay, so over here I have an integration test. And I'm auto wiring my service class <clears throat> and I'm doing a test just to make sure that, you know, whatever I request the Apollo mission, I get something that's not empty here. So if I test this file, um, I should get a green bar and I do boom. We're good. Okay. So very easy to start doing your integration test. You start dependency injecting your spring beans in there. Um, and if you're going to be doing some unit testing on your controllers, and much easier to mock them out now because you can do constructor injection, setter injection. You have full control of how to configure your controllers now because you uh, designed it that way now. Okay, so that completes integrating Spring Boot in a JavaFX application. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And next video will showcase again how to put this stuff together in JavaFX. If you want to know what's going on with the tutorials. Uh, you could always visit my social media links. I always uh, post what's coming up for the following week or what kind of next series I'm working on and stuff like that. And it's also a good place for you guys to get in touch with me. Well, that's it for me, guys. Signing off and until next time.